Assistant referees, Mark Perry. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, no wonder they gave you an extra day off this week. The training Champions League final that was as difficult to follow off the pitch as it was for Liverpool to get past Thibaut Courtois. The one-sided League Two playoff final that saw Port Vale make history. The F1 that keeps stopping and starting. The Champions Cup rugby, the Challenge Cup final in which the people of Huddersfield had to watch on as a last gasp try robbed them of one cup final victory. It has been a sporting jubilee. But before your street parties and cucumber sandwiches, your union jack bunting and dad dancing, there is just one more issue to resolve. So now it's to Wembley for one last dance. Which one of these former giants are going to be promoted back into the royal family? Huddersfield, who finished 18th last season, and who, but for one or two results, could have spent the campaign in League One this year. Or Nottingham Forest, the side that were bottom of the table in September when Steve Cooper came marching through the door. There seems to be a bit of romanticism about Nottingham Forest, but Huddersfield mustn't be underrated. They made two changes from the championship playoff semi-final second lead. Saar and Thomas come into the starting lineup. It's Nichols in goal. Lee, Saar and Cole will the back three. Pieper and Topolo are the wing backs with Thomas, Hogg and O'Brien in midfield. Sonani and Ward are the two strikers. And for Nottingham Forest, just the one change. Keenan Davis back into the starting lineup in the absence of Sam Surridge, who's been left on the bench. So it's Chris Samba in goal. Joe Worrell, Cook and McKenna, a granite-like back three, with Spence and Colback the wing backs. Yates and Garner in the centre of midfield. Zink and Argel creating behind Brennan Johnson, one of the championship's best players this season. And Keenan Davis in attack. David Connolly is alongside me. At this moment, at this juncture, what are the Nottingham Forest and Huddersfield players in a separate end of the ground, all in a little huddle with their teammates, just going through the last few bits, Jack Colback issuing instructions. What feelings are they having? Yeah, I mean, certainly Jack will have a lot of messages, you know, for his team. One, him and Steve Cook, probably two of the most experienced players in a, in a pretty young team. I know Jonathan Hogg for Huddersfield has said, you know, people are forgetting, like, you know, half our team have been to Wembley before, whether it's Championship League One, so that little bit of experience, these final little words, once your captains have gone back to the huddle, you know, little words of encouragement, sticking to your game plan, sticking together. Steve Cooper will remember last season's playoff final, the game was over within 20 minutes, so 2-0 down. You and I were here. That's right. And Ian. Yeah, not bad. They did turn up, did they? So I'm sure they will this time. It's all about learning and it's all about going through the, the processes that you've done over the last few months to get you here. So who can remember, who can do it? Well, Huddersfield might be happy to sit, soak, wait and then hit a deadly blow. Nottingham Forest are quite happy without the ball as well. Ian Holloway, part of our commentary team, on promotion through the playoffs twice with Blackburn Palace, but he also said to me today, have we lost one? Yeah, West Ham. Remember. yeah it's, it's a terrible scar on your heart but you, you need to keep checking it because it makes you stronger before we start proceedings the Nottingham Forest players take the knee as they ask for racial equality and social justice the Huddersfield players clap their hands and then we're off and underway with Huddersfield Town in blue and white striped jerseys white shorts and socks uh, are black they're attacking the goal away to our right hand side and Nottingham Forest in that Garibaldi red with white shorts and red socks attacking the goal away to our left-hand side. And I'm um, sure, David, over the course of the first few minutes, you'll just be getting your head around the Huddersfield Town formation, which you were a little bit unsure of when looking at the personnel. We'll get there in just a second, but Brennan Johnson has just been tackled in midfield and the ball has run to Sorba Thomas, who's running forward down the left-hand side, trying to cut infield, gets a hand in the face uh, from Yates, and that's going to be a free kick to Huddersfield and a lightning quick start from Sorba Thomas running down the left channel and causing problems for Nottingham Forest. Yeah, that is why he's in the team, you know, nice bit of skill there, little nutmeg on Yates and, you know, this is, this is a good area, is it, Ian, in terms is. of the set-piece delivery, that's why he's on the pitch, Thomas, nice little nutmeg there, just see Yates come in, just nips it through his legs and little hand, I've got to be careful there, Yates, that was a high arm, wasn't it? 
I think they're a, a 3 4 3, Dave, looking at Huddersfield. Yeah. John, John Moss is our referee today. We do have VAR as well. Paul Tierney in the booth, keeping an eye on proceedings for the first time in the Championship playoff final. That's the case. Sorba Thomas about to take a free kick then. He delivers the ball into the six yard area, bounces once and then drifts harmlessly wide and goes out for a goal kick away to our right hand side. But set piece is a feature of Carlos Corboran's team. Nottingham Forest actually very good at defending them, but they may well be key in this encounter as it goes on. Two minutes played. It's Huddersfield Town nil, Nottingham Forest nil, live on Talk Sport at Wembley, which is almost entirely full. There is a few bare patches in the top tier opposite us where Huddersfield haven't sold all of their tickets. They did return one or two as well. Nottingham Forest have been grabbing up tickets like you wouldn't believe. We were with the EFL PR people yesterday and they were getting constant phone calls from people trying to get in to this game. Ball drops loose on the right-hand side. Pieper, the Huddersfield Town right wing back, tries to play it forward. It's shuffled out of play by James Garner on loan from Manchester United and it goes out and away for a throw in halfway inside Huddersfield territory. Paul Brown already out in the technical area trying to cause problems. Sonani's just robbed Garner and moved into the midpoint of the opposition territory and through the centre of the midfield the ball is picked up by O'Brien he tries to drive forward doesn't manage to get any further than just in front of the centre circle before a foul is committed another free kick David yeah great footwork there you know super little bit of skill with his left foot inside and outside and they've started well here Huddersfield you can see defending deep no pressure on the ball is there when no. Sambi's got it they're just allowing them Huddersfield go on in for us you have it at the back and they're just not going to go and engage and then hope they force a turnover and there's been a signal here hasn't there from Jonathan Hogg completely changed the, the, the setup of this free kick they were going to keep the two central defenders and three central defenders back on the halfway line he signalled to change that Sorba Thomas about to drift it right into the box on the edge of the air it's flicked into the air by Hogg out comes Bree Samba and collects right on the edge of the six yard box then moves to the perimeter of his 18 yard box and bowls it out towards the near side yeah, I, I, I think Forrest are, you know, playing their normal game. Huddersfield are allowing them to have that, keeping fantastic shape. For me, the, the, the distances between the back line and the midfield and the forwards are quite exceptional for Huddersfield, and they're used to this. Their goals against Collins have been fantastic this season. they just got to be careful, Forrest. They don't just get lulled into what Huddersfield want them to do in terms of, I tell you, we're not going to risk the ball. It's all play back to front. They've done that a few times and lost it. Turned over by Yates, and Jed Spence is powering down the right-hand side, across into the area, which Saar deals with just about. O'Brien picks it up and tries to run it clear, and he very quickly gets it to Ward. Ward turns, drops a little deeper, plays it to the right, and Pieper moves up towards the halfway line, and Huddersfield have turned defence into attack. Ball played out towards Sinani, but across comes uh, McKenna, and he loops it forward, and it's back inside Huddersfield territory. 0-0 the score, you're listening to TalkSport. These two finished third and fourth in the championship this season. Both won 23 games, both were separated by just two points in one place. Many think it's going to be tight, and I think that's probably a sensible assessment. Huddersfield did make uh, hard work of seeing off Luton Town, so Forest are at their best. They could justify the favouritism that has certainly been doing the rounds. I must admit, I think that uh, the bookmakers were being very generous to Nottingham Forest and maybe overlooking Huddersfield's abilities. Here, down the left side, though, for Nottingham Forest comes Zinkenagel. Moves towards the left edge of the penalty area. He's got two for company, Sonani and Pieper. Goes back to Colback and then Garner whips the ball in towards the far post. It's aimed towards Worrell, who's joined the attack. There's a bit of pushing and shoving going on inside the 18-yard box. Worrell is penalised by John Moss and a free kick on the edge of the six-yard box. Yeah, I mean, Zinkenagel there is hoping Jack Colback's going to get around him. I mean, Jack's just going to support behind the ball and then maybe deliver from a little bit deep completely different sort of player to Jed Spence with that pace to run in behind down the right fantastic shape held by uh, Huddersfield's defence there really good distances in between the midfield aren't getting too deep they're really well coached by the look of it no no Ian Holloway was the player manager of Bristol Rovers the last time Nottingham Forest were in the top flight David Conley was on loan at Wolverhampton Wanderers <laughs> in the 1990s that's a long time ago man. 
Good research there, Sam, as always. I was, like a, that, I was the restaurant manager of McDonald's Bexley Heat. <laughs> <laughs> Always on the halfway line. You're listening to Talk Sport. We played six minutes. Nottingham Forest have the ball, just short of the centre circle. It's picked up by Steve Cook. He swipes it to McKenna, tall, lean figure. Uh, McKenna, but in that real powerful central defender. He's played in uh, almost every game this season. In fact, he started 47 of the 48 league and playoff games this campaign for Nottingham Forest. They've progressed down the right touchline, Forrest, and Jed Spence about to take a throw in. In fact, is it a free kick just in infield? No, it's going to be a uh, throwing over on the far side. Spence picked it up, dropped it, and saw that Thomas had to give it back to him. So they're about six, seven yards short of the penalty area, way on the right. Thrown into Zinkenheimer, who tries to twist and turn and get into a crossing position. Good defending again over on the far side by Topolo. And it's out for a goal kick away to Alec. Yeah, just a bit of a heavy touch there from Zinconago. I mean, on his day, he is so quick, fleet-footed, can turn on a sixpence. He's a real creative spark behind the likes of Johnson and, and Keenan Davis. I do think Forrest, you know, they don't have Surridge. And actually, they're playing a lot of long passes up to Keenan Davis. And he isn't as adept as Surridge in the air. So, if they are going for back to front, just drop it into him. Uh, Sarah's just taken a short goal kick and it's gone straight out of play over on the far side they've gifted the ball back to Forrest deep inside Huddersfield territory it's over on the right we played seven and a half minutes live on talk sport at Wembley Stadium where someone is going to get promoted to the Premier League today they've given the ball away cheaply though Silver Thomas has nicked it and now O'Brien drives forward the ball runs over towards the left hand side it's collected by Ward who tries to turn but Moral comes across and does his job and it goes out of play over on the far side and away for a Huddersfield throw but they can turn defence into attack very quickly can't very, they? Very very impressive break they do look like that's how they want to play and, and the, the incredible pace they just showed to get up and past Sorba was uh, enlightening for me that's why, that's why they finished third Sinani trying to trick his way forward and then it's uh, intercepted and cleared upfield by Zinkanagel and now Brennan Johnson's showing how quickly he can scamper up the field of play he does that, gets over to the far side puts pressure on the defence and it goes out of play and away for a throw in actually, the yeah, I mean, come on, he actually had time there didn't he he didn't need to boot the ball out of play for a throw but that is the presence of Brennan Johnson in and around you just don't take any chances Levi Colwell who is the third of the central defenders playing on the left hand side he's on loan from Chelsea 19 years of age 6 foot 2 centre back well he certainly showed a good uh, turn of pace there as well a big game for him to play in at 19 years of age a, uh, a final like this but then again Brennan Johnson's only turned 21 in the last week he's another one who uh, just getting a bit of a talking to from John Moss who is refereeing his final game of football today here's Yates taking the ball down from the throw in trying to get across it it wasn't the best he slashed at it it went over the top of the crossbar and it's out for a goal kick away to our left hand side football doesn't stop after today even though it is the end of the club season it's when the international football takes centre stage Wednesday night Poland against Wales is live on TalkSport 2 from 5 o'clock Italy against Argentina in the finalissimo live from Wembley 8 o'clock on Wednesday night on TalkSport Saturday next week we've got Hungary against England more Nations League to come and then at the beginning of July we'll be live across the country as the UEFA Women's European Championship comes to these shores and we'll have commentary of every single England game and all the big matches throughout the tournament here on TalkSport. You just saw Sam a bit of in-game management there, probably all the way spotted in, spotted it as well. You know, they were going to play out and Carlos after the last debacle said, no, uh, uh, get up the pitch, play long, get it over the halfway line. They've won the flick on, got a throw and now they're around the forest box. Ward plays it out towards the left. It's now Zorba Thomas who's seven yards back from the edge of the penalty area, retreats slightly, but he looks so fleet-footed and fast that his quick muscle twitches, moving the ball, manipulating it, trying to cause all sorts of problems for the forest defence and Huddersfield actually have started pretty brightly without creating too much in the opening 10 minutes of this game they've just lost the ball by maybe overplaying a little bit but they do look very very sharp especially when they get the ball in opposition territory 0-0 Huddersfield against Nottingham Forest and uh, it is amazing the work that Carlos Corberan has actually done to revitalise Huddersfield he and Lee Bromby the head of recruitment bought in only three transfers and loans pretty much over the course of the summer they re-signed Rhodes Nichols the MK Dons reserve goalkeeper has been a fantastic between the sticks for them Tom Lees John Russell Ollie Turton in the summer 
Nabi Sarr has just gone in and crunched Zinkanagel as the ball's been play, pl uh, ploughed up towards him. And uh, Zinkanagel was just threatening to get away there. Sarr, who's one of two changes for Huddersfield today, just dragged him back. And a free kick has been given just outside the penalty area, left side. Yeah, and the Forest players just surrounded John Moss. Obviously, you know, maybe they feel Huddersfield a bit of rough treatment for the likes of Zinkanagel and Johnson. Almost, they didn't raise their hand as if to indicate a yellow, but you could tell. That's what they're alluding to there, to John Moss. Well, he almost clotheslined him, didn't he? You know, he stuck his arm out there. Luckily, it wasn't high enough to catch him in the throat. But you know, you can't. This is this is a game for men today. You've got to be able to stand up and be counted. Scott McKenna at the far post. Laurel's come up from the back as well. And it's aimed in by Garner towards the edge of the penalty spot. Yates tries to glance it goalwards, and he narrowly misses the target with a brilliant leap and glancing header I think maybe the offside flag might have gone up there but certainly Yates didn't know that and he missed the target with what was a golden chance yeah certainly by his standards brilliant ball in from Garner in swinging delivery and yeah he's clearly offside oh no maybe he's not maybe Thomas might have just been keeping him on at the back post I tell what you what, delivery play. he should what have hit the target here he's only about six yards out little glancing header and here they come again, Keenan Davis putting Saar under a little bit of pressure and he's had a bit of a problem in the early stages, Saar. And he's given the ball away to Brennan Johnson, right side of the penalty area. Jed Spence moves up into the box, he flicks it wide towards the right. Johnson looks up, left-footed, into the near post, aiming towards Keenan Davis. Saar goes across, stamps it out of play and it's out for another Nottingham Forest throw. I mean, you tell me how many times, Sam, that Naby Saar has played central centre-back. A lot of Charlton player, uh, fans will know him, you know, in terms of playing left-side centre-back, but not too many times middle of a back three and he's been a, a slightly nervous couple of times lost possession looks you know taking too long in possession and yeah he's got to get up to speed a little bit and i thought you made a good point in the build up to the game have huddersfield changed for sam Surridge, yeah who's i not think in the so team today. that's right yeah and, and sometimes i'm saying this to Ian, you know, as a younger coach maybe they haven't but as a younger coach sometimes you might overthink things too much you know be a bit braver bolder in terms of what you do when you're a bit older like steve cooper last season you yeah, know, he changed his shape when for the shape final. It work, so, yeah. And it looked like his team didn't understand what he wanted them to do. So Carlos is thrown a, looking at a, throwing a few shapes himself there, talking to them, trying to get them to settle down a little bit. But you can be a little bit rusty, I think, particularly if you've got to move, if you're normally left centre half in a three and you've got to come another 10 or 15 yards yeah, across. It's a it's different, position, totally different yeah. game. You're not Absolutely. used to seeing that. And if you haven't been playing regularly enough, it's very difficult to step out onto an arena like this and look cool. You managed it with your port pie hat earlier. Uh, here is, to. <laughs> is Steve Cook moving up to the centre circle, playing it to the right. Jed Spence takes it on. It's away by Topolo, but it's recovered once more uh, by Worrell and Nottingham Forest. have just grown into the game as the game has gone on. Steve Cooper preaching calm this week. We're at this, finally, said, this magnificent stadium in this high-pressure game. Because we've done things in a certain way, we have to continue with that as much as possible. Here is James Garner, who's been a big part of that. You can see why with his delivery for that effort for Yates, why well, he's got eight assists already this season. That's been the best chance of the game so far. It's gone to Nottingham Forest. Johnson combining with Spence down the right-hand side. Gets to the byline, sends it into the near post, it's smuggled behind, and it's out for the first corner of the game, and it goes Nottingham Forest way. Here's David Connolly. Yeah, lovely little give and though. go this time between Spence and Johnson. One thing Spence has tried, he's gone on the outside a couple of times on his own, and he hasn't got past Toffolo. This time he uses a little wall pass, and that helps him get past his man. Good ball in from the byline, just put out for a corner. Corner then to be taken over on the far side. Jack Colback, the former Sunderland Newcastle midfielder, who's actually now playing as a left wing back, will place the ball down in the quadrant as tight to the corner flag as he can get it. The crowd in the six yard box here, Nottingham Forest, and I don't think John Moss is too happy about it, so he's going across to that area of the field which is uh, still bathing in sunlight. And uh, he's having a quick word with Keenan Davis, who's uh, on loan from Aston Villa, signed in January. And he's had a quick uh, word in the ear with uh, Scott McKenna as well as the corner kick is about to be taken. Left footed, curling right under the crossbar. Goalkeeper comes and completely misses it. But it was a little bit too high for everybody. And Nichols just shakes his head and walks back to his uh, goal mouth and realises that actually that was a, a dangerous delivery. He was absolutely nowhere near that, was he, to be honest? Again, is that a little bit of nerves in this occasion? Well... 
And it's amazing, really, when you look at it, because uh, this is a guy who's been around the, the, the block a little bit in the lower leagues. He was on the bench, really, for, for MK Dons, but he's been a mainstay of this Terrier side all season. You can see him, look, he's just shaking his head there to himself. He knows, you know, a bit like Bryce Samber in a semi-final first leg. Came for a couple of corners, had nowhere near, nowhere near getting them. And, you know, Nichols maybe just think, you know what, I'll just settle down now. Why not come for the next one? Yeah, first uh, in terms of ranking for number of saves in the championship this season and in terms of percentage saves as well, Lee Nichols. And we had it yesterday, actually, with Aidan Stone. Just got a little bit excited at certain times in the first half. In fact, the goalkeeping coach of uh, Port Vale at half-time took him to one side and tried to calm him down, said, look at the situation we're in, we're turning up, you know. You don't need to, 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 to come out and start being extravagant, just do solid things and we'll get through it. And I suppose that's probably a message that maybe Lee Nichols might need to hear as the game goes on. Poor decision to give the ball away on the edge of the box by Levi Cole. Will actually Huddersfield recover, but then the ball goes out again. And they've just lost a little bit of the uh, the fast start and the energy that they had when we first had the whistle blow here at Wembley Stadium. Nottingham Forest just starting to assert their authority on the match. Yeah, you can just see Carlos Corbran. I mentioned him. I saw him at Brentford. I mean, he is so animated on the side. I haven't seen that many like him, to be honest. You know, just screaming at his players, getting back in shape. Well, there's something that they're not doing. He was going completely ballistic there. Zinkanagel's going down the right. Nabi Sar has to come up and try and squeeze it away. It's picked up on the left side of the penalty area, but given straight back again. And Yates has got it once more. In front of the centre circle is James Garner. A little turn, a pirouette from Jack Colbeck. Keeps Nottingham Forest in possession. 0-0 the score live on Talk Sport. Remember, we've got loads more football to come and we'll have all the fallout from this game on breakfast tomorrow morning when you wake up 6 a.m. Will Laura Woods be back from the Monaco Grand Prix, by the way? Well, she did take a helicopter private jet and a yacht to get there, so I'm sure she can get back for tomorrow's breakfast show. Uh, here is Brees Samba on the edge of the 18-yard box away to our right. Clips the ball forward, in towards Davis, doesn't win the header. It's away by Tom Lees, headed back towards the halfway line. This time, Keenan Davis a little bit more aggressive and goes up with O'Brien. He's a little bit bigger than O'Brien, just a little bit bigger than O'Brien. Shrugs him off the ball, but still Huddersfield managed to come away with it. Hogg guides it back to Lees. It's a little bit longer, and Lees will have to go all the way back to his goalkeeper. Nichols, who's in yellow today, defending the goal away to our left, and then Nabi Sar gets caught again, and then Johnson and Zinkanago cause him a real problem. And uh, he's uh, he's having a word, isn't he, Nabi Sar? But I think he's the problem. I mean, do you know it's a problem with Tom Nichols because Tom's got to realise that is not Jonathan Hogg anymore. Jonathan Hogg has been that central centre back for weeks and weeks and weeks. He's the one that has got on playing. He's the one that drops out like a Beckenbauer. Nabi Sar is not that. Player. Why are you giving him a straight pass there? You're inviting the press and they just about got away with that. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Carlos really doesn't look happy with the left-hand side of his team. He's berating them, he's talking to them, he is turning away in disgust. They are not doing something he wants. Well, it's amazing, really, because that left-hand side of his team is where Harry Toffolo usually is the, the mainstay of the attack. But that is where Forrest's key strengths are. That's yeah. why he's got Spencer to keep Johnson. on top of it. Absolutely. That well, was always going to be a critical area of the pitch. I think he's but he's having a go. He's having a go as Orba Thomas. He's not doing what he wants him to do on a regular basis. So, be interesting. Ian Holloway and David Connolly in the commentary box here at Wembley. The ball with Nottingham Forest. Nil nil the score. Good start from Huddersfield, but... Forest have wrestled control of the match in the last 10 minutes or so. We played nearly 20. And the Nottingham Forest fans packed in away to our right. I mean, when you go to a football match and you look at the crowd, there's often different colours, isn't there? Those shirts and clothing that people are wearing. It's almost exclusively red away to our right and exclusively white and blue away to our left-hand side. The club day. shops have done well. <laughs> they must have made a few quid. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's a huge industry these days, isn't it? But there's certainly some old-fashioned forest shirts that I've seen on the way in. Yeah, hey, you're rocking the blue and white Huddersfield. Uh, no, Crystal Movers, mate. Sorry. Oh. 
Not the cast. <laughs> seven nil, mate. Seven nil. Last. Well done, Joey. Um, here is Keenan Davis. Is uh, Ian Holloway where it refers to Bristol Rovers' a dramatic last day promotion from League Two, um, which didn't make anybody from Bristol popular in Northampton. Uh, here is uh, Joe Wall diving in for a tackle on the halfway line, picked up by Cook, and then it's into Zinkenagel, who very quickly hands it off to Yates, who's on the edge of the area, and he balloons it right footed over the bar with Brennan Johnson moving down the right channel and the option to maybe play it back to Zinkenagel. There was a little bit of rush of blood to the head from the eights inside the box. He has scored nine goals this season. He's been excellent in the heart of midfield, but he made the wrong choice there. Yeah, they've done this really well, though, in terms of zipping the ball into the front and playing the little ball around the corner. We saw Spence and Johnson do that on the right, but here, Yates, he's got to just put, put Johnson in down the right-hand side of the box. Chose the wrong option there. And what you would say, for all the attempts and possession they've had, they still haven't really hit the target. No, Yates is the first opportunity, a glancing header from a brilliant free kick which was whipped in by James Garner. It's the best chance of the game so far. And Garner's just lost that in midfield and now the ball's been sent upfield towards Sinani who has been dispossessed by the covering Steve Cook. He's playing in his first playoff final actually, Steve Cook, despite the fact he's 31. You'll remember him from Bournemouth for many years, the linchpin of their defence. This is his first experience of a playoff final today. What a fantastic signing, Sam. If, as a manager, if you're looking for someone who's been there, seen it, done it, who's a great character, a great leader, signing Cook was a masterstroke for yep. Steve Cooper. And relatively cheaply as well. Here is uh, Scott McKenna, up to the halfway. To the left-hand side is Jack Colback and then James Garner. There was uh, all sorts of speculation as to who was going to play up front. They have experience in their team. And Lewis Brabham, one of those, but got injured towards the end of the campaign. He scored that goal against Arsenal when they beat them live on television in the FA Cup. Here is Johnson trying to go down the right-hand side. Davis actually playing for the first time since the, or starting for the middle, for the first time since the middle of April. O'Brien goes forward towards the left and very quickly Huddersfield are on the attack. Zorba Thomas is snuffed out of it though by Worrell and Jed Spence who clear towards the far side. They tidy up well and it goes out for a throw in over on the far side. But another lightning quick attack from uh, Huddersfield. And I suppose that has been a hallmark of their early gameplay here trying to get the ball up quickly when they do get it to Thomas they do look a threat even though at the moment you'd say Forrest were ahead on points yeah I mean look a stat just popped up in terms of the last 10 minutes I think it's what 84 percent or 86 percent possession I mean I wrote down here at the start I think Huddersfield will be a back six I'm surprised they're just a five <laughs> you know, to be honest and and it, it tells you you know this is their game plan they, they, they play this like this way week in week out and certainly at Wembley nothing's really going to change I think that they just won the ball a little bit higher up I think he's managed to sort out the left and the left hand side look at him now he's doing it again what are you doing why are you that high look at him he's <laughs> I love him honestly Ward he's taps fantastic. the ball back towards the left and Colwell who's now tight to the touchline over on the far he's doing side. the Bielsa sit down now look he must have taught him that someone gave him a bucket <laughs> Uh, it's up towards the midpoint of the uh, Forest half. A little tap on the ankle from Zinkenagel. And that's going to be a free kick just left of the centre circle for Huddersfield Town. Huddersfield Town, who, uh, since they were relegated really from the Premier League, have been fighting relegation more than thinking about getting promoted again. They were relegated from the Premier League in 2019. They started this season with a thumping defeat to Fulham. And I bet no one thought when they lost that game 5 1 at home, David, that they would be here today. No, that's right. Uh, I don't think anybody in the turnaround has been quite remarkable. I mean, he's had a little sit down now for the minute, Corbra. But look, it's a set piece. This is where Thomas has proven so often this season to be the difference. Yeah, it's been the key feature of their attacking thrust, hasn't it? And uh, Naby Sarr's gone up for this one. It's delivered towards Colwell, but it's headed away by Steve Cook towards the halfway line. And it's collected again by Huddersfield and Pieper, the Spanish right wing back who runs into the centre circle. Just took a little bit too much time there really and was under pressure from Sinkanago. His ball forward was easily intercepted by Jed Spence and then Forrest managed to get it to the halfway line. Keenan Davis wrestles, wins the ball, skips past one challenge, wants a free kick, is not going to get it. 
Huddersfield get it back again inside the centre circle. And then it's played in towards Hogg, who then strokes the ball down the left side. And here's Zorba Thomas running at Jed Spence, jinking his way to the edge of the area. It goes wide to the left. The low ball in towards the near post is easily dealt with. And it's cleared away and up towards the... Uh, the figure of Brendan Johnson. I thought he was going to get a free kick there. They didn't. They played on here. And Huddersfield have it back again. Sinani. Back to Pieper. Pieper across to uh, that left-hand side where Nabi Saar almost has gone into a back four now with Colwell playing at left back and Topolo playing as an out-and-out -out left winger at the moment. They look like they've just flexed slightly. Huddersfield town. See what happens when uh, they've lost the ball because it means that Toffolo has got to come back into a more defensive position. They have just won it back on the edge of their own penalty area. It's flicked forward towards Sinani. Referees allowing play on. Now he's seen there's no advantage. He's going to give a free kick against Nottingham Forest. The Forest fans aren't happy about it. And John Moss quickly blows his whistle. And then stalks over towards uh, O'Brien. Has a quick chat with him. And he is a free kick. If you're going to finish your career, what a wonderful tribute to finish it on a day like this. John, I don't know about some arguments with him over in my time. But, uh, John Moss, the referee. Yeah. John Moss, yeah. So well done to you, sir. Thanks for all your hard work. Yeah, going to uh, enjoy his retirement, I think. And uh, part-time in the, the vinyl whistle, the, uh, the record shop, and the other half being part of the PGMO L's mentoring and coaching team, I think. As they develop, try to develop a new swathe of referees. Quite a few referees that have retired this time around. I hear Mike Dean's got an agent. Strictly or some celebrity? Get me out of here. What do you reckon? What's your money on? I think, I think put him in the jungle, mate, and do some tasks. I think <laughs> <laughs> you'll be the one feeding in the world, yeah. will you? <laughs> <laughs> we won't have a game without these chaps, and I, I want to argue no, with no. them for too long. And they're characters as well. You know that. You know, but one of the things is that they are big characters. Here is the goalkeeper Lee Nichols, who's uh, got the ball at his feet now. Huddersfield just slowed the tempo of the game down a little bit. Carlos Corboran is still doing his. Uh, well, is that is, is that some sort of uh, workout video move he's doing there? Crouching down, it's almost like semi squats there that he was getting up to as he was pointing out certain things to his team. They decided to go a little bit longer, and he claps and applauds that as they look for. Torba Thomas in behind, quite work out on that occasion, it's cleared away by Nottingham Forest, you have the ball just short of the halfway line, into Zinconagel who tries to weave away from Hogg, can't quite keep it in, it goes out and it's away for a throw in, and uh, yeah, maybe they have just managed to just, uh, just slow the game down a little bit, make it a little bit scrappier, a few more stoppages, and just upset the rhythm of Nottingham Forest. Yeah, I mean they'll be pretty happy I think, certainly with how they've started here, Huddersfield, and, and for Forest they knew they'd have a lot of the ball today, it's just what they do with it, you know, Huddersfield will look more potent to be honest, they haven't had as much of it, that's for sure. Oh, Spence nabbed it from Toffolo, and he's bounded into Huddersfield territory, a right footy cross, in towards Johnson, it's over his head and Leeds will manage to get it away, and it's headed clear by... Huddersfield Town, back it comes again with Jed Spence, who's on the right angle of the penalty area, attacking the goal away to our left, he moves into the box, he's got two in front of him, he takes on Toffolo, then turns and then comes back and needs some help, Ball provides that, infield it goes to Garner, who's ten yards short of the area, square and on to Scott McKenna, who sizes up one from distance, it was a bit of a daisy cutter, and it was easily dealt with by Naby Sarr. Well, I, I th I've been frustrated if I was Forrest there, certainly if I was in the box, as uh, one of the only times I had four players in there, you know, just yeah. got, put the ball in there, Spence tried to go on the outside, he couldn't, work it over to the left-hand side, and they've just got to keep it coming, just keep working down the flanks, don't be rushed into anything, shooting from 40 yards out, Again, you know when you're centre-half shooting from 40 yards out. That, that's, the, that's the occasion for you, isn't it, you know? We've seen Vincent Company do it very well at one time, but um, yeah, even on that day, the people around him were saying, "No, no, no, well, don't, don't do it." it. Oh, get in! <laughs> no, that was against Leicester City, wasn't it? To basically seal the title, basically. Um, here is Cook, just short of the centre circle. You're listening to Talksport. Half an hour gone. At Wembley on a sun-drenched afternoon. The ball clipped down the left touch line for Nottingham Forest. And Keenan Davis is chasing it. He's trying to hold on to it. Leeds comes across, puts it out to for a throw-in. Deep inside Huddersfield territory for Nottingham Forest. And Forest, who can tell you apart at time, they finished the regular season with a plus goal difference of 33. And there were several times this season when they flexed that goal-scoring muscle. But their attacking depth, maybe not as strong 
as some as the, the, the others. Here is Davis to the edge of the area. Zinkenaga trying to get a shot in, but it's blocked by Hogg. Into the air it goes, taken down well by Spence, who keeps the move alive. Worrell back down to Johnson, who chests it back towards uh, Spence. It was in his direction, but it was cut out by Toffolo, and it's cleared up over the halfway line. It remains goalless. It's David Conley. Yeah, I mean, not a lot of change in terms of just looking up for us. Just being a bit patient, you know, don't be forced into... Well, it's not a bad ball, though. Yeah, and uh, Lee Nichols had to come out, and he's fired the ball in front of Brennan Johnson, who was careering down that right-hand side. It was clipped into the right channel. Johnson went towards it, and Nichols had to come out and take up the role of sweeper-keeper. I mean, I'd like to see Keenan Davis in the, in the game a little bit more. You know, he got hold of it just then down this left-hand side, and, and that was good play, but prior to that, he hasn't really won a flick on or really got hold of the ball and obviously got sorry sitting there on the bench as well I think it's a big call really big call from Cooper it'll be interesting to see at what ju juncture of the game they switch yeah, that around absolutely because what you want is Davis to be really running around there put himself yeah. about knowing that he's not going to play 90 minutes or 80 minutes or 70 he hasn't quite seen as I guess as energetic or as effervescent as I would have hoped yeah, he hasn't really played 90 minutes now often no. either has he for, no. for Nottingham Forest he's been pretty much sort of go up there soften the button and get somebody else on you're listening to Huddersfield Nil, Nottingham Forest nil in the EFL Championship playoff final. Live on Talk Sport with McDonald's Fun Football. Search McDonald's Fun Football to find out more. And uh, well, I think I think Huddersfield strangulation of them is very very good. You know, and now. Saw the Thomas the trying to come forward, he's oh, looking to try and release Ward down the left hand side, doesn't reach him, it goes towards the right side, and Brees Samba picks it up and we can go down to the touchline where uh, Mark Wilson is waiting for us today, hi Mark. Yeah, hi guys, it's interesting your comments about uh, Carlos Corbran, believe me he's reined it in a lot, he used to be a lot more animated than he is, I know he's been up and down all day today but he used to be a lot worse than that. Interesting as well, Ollie Turton, John Russell and Matty Pearson been warming up for quite a while for this field, I wonder if he might be thinking about some early changes. And Mark was talking to me a little bit earlier on and suggesting that maybe Matty Pearson, if he was 100% fit today, might have even started the game, despite the fact that he's been out for eight games with a knee injury. Uh, and he's warming up, has been warming up on the near touchline. It is nil-nil between Huddersfield Town and Nottingham Forest, 33 on the clock at Wembley, and Nottingham Forest have possession. And they've had the best chances of the game. Two for Ryan Yates, the first of which a glancing header, which he steered beyond the far post after a delicate delivery from James Garner, who's already registered eight assists this season. Probably feels as if he could have had another one there. Yates missed the target. Well, it's hard, you know, because Forrest can't really get in behind Huddersfield, so... You know, trying to play through them has been difficult. Going over the top has been hard as well. This one just slightly over here. And I think if you've got Surridge up there, if in doubt, you can just knock it up to him, play off that, win the flick on or second balls. But they haven't quite got that option so far. So a little bit frustrating this first sort of period for Forrest. Well, I think it's down to Huddersfield's brilliant distances between their back line and their midfield line. There's no space. There's, you know, they're not going too high where they're inviting it in behind them they're not going too deep where there's spaces to hit Davis into into his feet and he brings uh, Zinkenagel into it so you know for me I'd like to give Carlos credit for his structure Thomas skips away from Worrell brilliant little ball down the left hand side drives into the penalty low ball punched away by Bree Samba before it can reach those careering into the box including O'Brien who did darting into the area to try and get on the end of the cross but it was a good little move by Silver Thomas and his first touch as he was approached by Worrell was just to flick it down that left touch line chase after it and gain the space to get the cross in they are lightning quick on the counter attack aren't they super Absolutely. bit of skill here from Thomas you know received it at the feet and then just knocked this over the leg of Worrell here he comes dives in flicks it over his leg looks so he can't tackle him breaks into the box I just think here a bit of composure cut the cross back a little bit too close to Samba Huddersfield nil, Nottingham Forest nil. But Sorba Thomas certainly his return to the team has been really uh, shown as important. And Keenan Davis has just got the wrong side of Hogg here. And he's run through the centre circle and he's got three in the attack in front of him. And Brennan Johnson over on the far side has been screaming for the ball. Didn't quite get to him. Yates now finds Spence who joins the attack on the right side. Moving towards the right angle of the penalty area. Yates just drops off to receive the ball. There's three waiting in the area. Goes back out to Jed Spence again. Nottingham Forest trying to knit together an attack. But Huddersfield back in shape. And with loads of bodies behind the ball. Difficult to penetrate. Down the right.
right, Jed Spence goes, looking to find a trick to get across him. Has to cut back again, being frustrated so far, Forrest. Ball, back to the left and it's on to Garner. Garner flicks it to McKenna. They commit more bodies forward because they know there's more bodies to get past. And it comes up to McKenna once again and they've just been pushed back, inch back slowly to the midpoint of the Huddersfield, Huddersfield half. They all know the score. Forrest still coming forward. Colback, left side. Plays it infield to Garner. Garner into the feet of Ryan Yates. Yates turning and playing it square. And Worrell now, almost on the halfway line, has to play it out wide for Spence, who's hoping that Johnson will make a dart down that right channel, but he hadn't it drifted infield. And then Yates just miscontrols it. And now a chance for Huddersfield to break. And Ward has picked the ball up in the centre circle and it's out to Thomas. And Thomas showing that lightning speed again. Running at Worrell and coming inside. Then going on the outside. Still got the ball. Huddersfield putting men inside the area now. And Thomas then has the ball nicked off him by Yates. Throws himself to the floor. Referee says play on. And now Nottingham Forest charge up the field. They get to the halfway line. It's played infield towards Zinconagel. Across to James Garner. He takes it in. A bit of space for him to run into now. And then Keenan Davis just motions towards the middle. It goes wide to Colback and it all slows down again. But there was a hectic period of play there, David. Yeah, I just think Thomas at times need a bit of support. You know, certainly when Forrest double up on him, as, as did there, maybe it might be Toffolo just to try and get up the pitch. But what Toffolo's worried about is if they lose the ball. But I think at times, Thomas, he just needs to get up and help him. You know, I agree with you, but, you know, you don't normally got that sort of threat, have you? Down that side with Johnson. In one ball, if, if, if you do lose it, one ball can do you, cut you open. It's a little bit cagey as well, really. Zinconaga out to the right side, and now it's collected by Johnson. He runs up to the 18-yard box and plays it infield to Garner. He's drifting towards the right side, and Spence tries to combine with Zinconaga, whose touch is heavy, and then Hogg comes across and clears. Experience Here's Jonathan the break. Hogg, Look at him and sprint. then they go across the halfway line again, and they're bounding forward over on that far side, and Ward is dragging them up the pitch, and they've got Sinani waiting in the centre, well, they can't get the cross in, it's a brilliant challenge that, from uh, Garner, who got back to help out his defence, and it's away for a corner, the first of the game for Huddersfield Town. What a brilliant tackle, well done Garner, that's what you need to do, both sides of the job, don't just go forward, get back and help out. Look at this. He snuffed that danger. He read that dearie me, Dave. I'm glad I'd give up after that. I, I tell you what, though, if you're Steve Cooper, you'd probably be worried a little bit about the amount of times that Huddersfield have got in behind Worrell because it looks like he's having a bit of a wobbly time. You know, just getting through to half time. Maybe see if he can gain some composure. He's dived in once or twice now. Set piece kings. Here they come. Huddersfield with Sorba Thomas taking this uh, corner kick and he's manipulating where he wants the bodies inside the area right footed he's towards the edge of the penalty spot Ward strikes it hits the defender and goes behind it was well worked that they knew exactly what to expect a low ball to the penalty spot spinning from behind the clutch of the defenders was Ward who ran around the other side met the ball struck it firmly and it was deflected behind yeah clever off the training ground this one just a couple of early runners dragging players towards the near post trying to open up that gap for Ward Brilliant block in the end. Oh, look at this one, another one off the training ground because all of the Huddersfield attacking unit are right on the edge of the six-yard area at the back post, at the far side of it. It's in towards the middle of the goal, headed into the air and away by McKenna. It drops inside the box and then it doesn't quite come down for a Huddersfield jersey. Jed Spence spirals and smashes the ball out to the far side and it's away for a throw into Huddersfield Town. You another have a well-worked set piece. One fantastic, honestly. This is this is what Huddersfield have been doing all season. And that's why they ended up third, really unluckily in, in, a, in a funny way, because no, none of us said they were going to be there. I knew Carlos would be planning these sort of things, and, you know, that's why they're so, so dangerous. O'Brien drives forward. It's on from uh, Sinani to Pipa. Pipa moves up towards the right edge of the box. He's about seven yards back from it, gives it back to O'Brien, who tries to burst forward. He goes through two Forest players. The ball runs out towards the corner flag. He just about keeps it in. Goes back infield again to Pippa, and then he wants a corner kick. He's not getting one. It's a goal kick for Nottingham Forest away to our right-hand side. So five minutes before half-time here at Wembley. Remember, next weekend, next Saturday, we've got Hungary against England. Before that, two international matches for you. Wednesday night, TalkSport 2. It's Poland against Wales. That's a friendly game at 5 o'clock. And then Italy against Argentina, the finalissimo, the champions of South America against the champions of Europe, live on Wednesday night from Wembley.
Ball loose in midfield for Hogg and he won't, wins it. It's up to Ward who finds Orba Thomas and then there's a big strong tackle by Worrell who brings out one of those telescopic right legs and manages to shoot the ball clear. Gets it back again from uh, Brennan Johnson but the build up a bit too slow. Yeah and also you know the front part of the pitch for Forrest have got to get hold of the ball. I mean Jack Hobart tries to drop a ball into Philip Zinkenar but he must know Naby Sar is going to come through. He's got to come and meet it and they're just losing the ball far too often up front for us. Over the halfway line they trundle now with uh, Worrell finding Spence. Spence back to Worrell again. Again it's very slow and methodical from Nottingham Forest, not rushing anything. It's out towards Colbank, never going to reach that. It's away by uh, Pieper. And it's out on this near touchline the way for a throw deep inside his own. Well, deep inside. Forest territory goes back to uh, McKenna and then all the way back to goalkeeper Brees Samba. So goalless. And uh, they are a young side, Nottingham Forest. There are seven of the 11 are under 25 years of age, which uh, shows you that they might be a little naive at times, but they have played in big matches before. And this is a team that have already beaten Arsenal and beaten uh, Leicester City in the FA Cup this season. And, gone on and given Liverpool a bit of a headache as well. Look, when the ball is forced back to Bryce Samba, you know, Keenan Davis has got to get onside. You know, he, he's just a little bit slow and laboured in his movements because it went back to Samba there. Samba kicked long, Davis was offside. It just meant Huddersfield could take the ball down and then go and play. They just need a little bit more from that front part of the pitch for us. It'll be interesting to see what happens at half-time. He's quite a uh, proactive coach, Steve Cooper. If he sees something that needs to change, he will change it. Even sometimes making first-half substitutions. Zinconar moving out to the wide right now. Maybe they'll try and conjure something before half-time that gives them an advantage here. It's back to Yates in midfield. They're in the midpoint of the Huddersfield half, and everybody apart from Danny Ward is behind the ball for Huddersfield. As they move down the left forest, into Colback, and then he cuts infield, past Sonani, into Yates again, helps it on very quickly to Worrell, then speedily up to Zinconago, then Yates, and then back out left to McKenna. That's what they're going to do, move the ball quicker. On to Davis, down the left now, trying to take on the defender, Lees. He moves up to the edge of the area, then slips it back to Garner. A chance to cross, he does cross. It's touched in towards the near post, and it's smashed in what a brilliantly by Yates. Wonderful what a delivery by Garner. And smashed in by Yates on the edge of the six-yard box. They all celebrate. Wow, what a goal. What a fantastic goal. Take the lead in the playoff final. It was all going a little bit quiet there, but played it back 10 or 15 yards to Garner. What a ball. A bit similar to the pass he put in earlier on. On the move. Top corner. Can't ask for much more than that. Look at that crowd there. Unbelievable. Yeah, fabulous ball in. Really, really good here from Garner. We saw this with a free kick, didn't we? Put into Yates on the head. This time, it bounces in front. And is it an OG? I think it's an own goal. It might have just come off a Huddersfield man there. But it's a really good ball into an area. Jack Cobbett ducks out of it. Oh, it is. He doesn't get a contact on us. I think it's Colville, is it? Yeah. I think it might be an own goal from Colville. But it doesn't matter. Nonetheless, Forrest have got the lead. Wow. Well, Steve Cooper celebrates. Levi Colville. He is in the spotlight for the wrong reasons. It was a brilliant ball in from Garner. Yates went across his marker. Yeah. And that swiped his right foot at it. And it went canning right off the knee of Colwell and into the roof of the net. And it's Huddersfield nil. Forest one. Well, David, I know all about that. You've got to get across your, your marker. And he did that. And that's caused all the problems. But what a great ball in. We've got a game on our hands now. That's nice. brilliant from James Garner, terrific delivery, the Manchester United player on loan at Nottingham Forest and he's come up with his ninth got assist of the season and it's been integral for Nottingham Forest progress, brilliant delivery by him, he could have created a goal in the first nine minutes of the match, only for Yates to put it over the top of the crossbar and Yates will probably be feeling as if it hasn't been his day so far but he's certainly played a big part, Keenan Davis after Garner wins the ball in midfield, takes it over the halfway line, Zink and Argyle peels away to the left, and Keenan Davis just held on to it for a little bit too long there, it's a bit cumbersome yeah. on the ground. It's, I think it's been a frustrating half for him, for the Forest front man, I mean I know he had a hand in the, in the goal there, and he actually did well to roll the ball back to Garner rather than McKenna, that was certainly the right player to pick out. Colback, 
onto Davis, couldn't hold on to it, but manages to turn and keep it alive. Sergio Perez has won the range short Monaco Grand Prix ahead of Carlos Sainz. We'll get details at halftime from Graham Courtney. Here Nottingham Forest lead by a goal to nil. Picked up by Yates. And then taken towards the midpoint of the Huddersfield half. On to Jed Spence. And then one minute has been allotted at the end of the first 45 minutes. To add on as additional time. Yates on to the left and it's collected once again by Colback and then back to McKenna and now of course Huddersfield have to make all of the running don't they because they know that Nottingham Forest have that slender advantage and come on you Reds is the cry from the Forest fan for twirling their scarves above their head as we approach the half-time whistle here on Talk Sport. This is what you don't get anywhere else is it? Listen to this absolutely incredible well if I was this close to half time I'd be getting Jack Cole back a lot closer to McKenna and just just see this out now if Huddersfield aren't going to pressure them done all half just keep it a monster at the back wait for the referee John Moss to blow the whistle and we go in one up and that whistle is not too far away now Steve Cooper who celebrated wildly when they scored the goal points to the air because he wants the kick from Samba to go long and as it does go long there is the half time whistle and this is that roar from the Nottingham Forest supporters they have suffered enough four scores in the last 25 years not to get ahead of themselves but they lead the playoff final at the break thanks to an own goal from Levi Colwell after a brilliant delivery from James Garner and all of a sudden if they look hard enough it looks like they can see the Premier League through the tricky trees at half time it is Huddersfield town nil Nottingham Forest one both teams are out for the start of the second half and no apparent changes at the start of the second 45 as the fourth official Craig Paulson just gets a few instructions from uh, Mick Howard the uh, floor manager down in front of us the TV floor manager just has a quick word in his ear just to make sure that uh, everything's ready for the start of the second half which gets underway with Huddersfield starting us shooting from right to left in those blue and white striped jerseys, white shorts and black socks and Nottingham Forest in red shirts, white shorts and red socks attacking the goal away to our right hand side and Huddersfield have won 14 games in the championship this season but most of them have come from a one goal margin which is the most in the league and I think they will be very disappointed I think it upsets their game plan that they've conceded in that first 45 minutes and it was fascinating listening to the tactical discussions of Ian Holloway and David Connolly at half time I must admit Mark Wilson came up to me and the first thing he said was they're missing Russell in midfield David yeah absolutely and, and that is the chance you know Dan and I we just spoke about it and obviously taking Hogg out of there as well how long this will continue and if they can get themselves back into the game quickly then they may well be able to stick with the game plan but they'll need to do that pretty quick smart the ball has been placed about 15 yards inside Nottingham Forest territory right footed Sorba Thomas clips the ball towards the far post looking for Huddersfield's uh, Danny Ward it bounces on the edge of the box it's sent wide towards the right hand side collected now and then sent in by Topolo left footed deep towards the far post Samba comes out punches the ball well out of the area it goes Sorba Thomas lines up another delivery it's a good one right into the goalkeeper maybe just a little bit too high on that occasion and straight down the throat the Nottingham Forest goalie Bree Samba he'll be disappointed with that his delivery is normally on the button that was a great chance now Nottingham Forest go up the other end and look to try and probe the Huddersfield defence and Johnson who's just pulled away to the left hand side unlike him he usually operates very much down the right into Zinkenagel and then back to Brennan Johnson now Colback and it still remains 1-0 to Nottingham Forest and now it's been picked up by Yates who right footed strikes one and it bounces just in front of the goalkeeper and Lee Nichols had to be alert takes one step to his right gathers it into his chest and will clear away 1-0 yeah not bad I, I guess idea from Yates again get another shot off but I still rather he worked the ball out wide to Jed Spence rather than shooting from again so far out and Wembley full of uh, dignitaries and uh, high profile supporters I did just see poor old Stuart Broad in the uh, in the corridor and uh, he was being told off by a steward for having a red scarf. No club colours allowed in that section, he said, sir. He said, so you'll have to go and take it back in. Stuart Broad explained that he'd had it in the first half and the bloke said to him, no, I don't care, you've got to go back. Which I just politely let over to him and said, I do know that's Stuart Broad, don't you? And he went, oh, was I rude? <laughs> 
Liverpool didn't get that scarf back in there, that's for sure. <laughs> a bit of uh, official dumb. I thought you were going to touch on Steve Hodge. We've seen him here. He's here, yes. And our, he's, well, after, he, after, his, after, his paraphernalia is a little <laughs> bit more expensive than that scarf, though, David. After banking £7 million, I think he, <laughs> he could probably do with a day off. Yeah, Steve, Doesn't need the money. Steve Hodge, who uh, sold Maradona's jersey from the 1986 World Cup for £7 million quid recently. And good luck to him as well. Uh, ball sent forward down the right, looking for the run of Johnson. Intervening was Colwell. And then it's picked off by uh, Sinani. Huddersfield have it back again. Nottingham Forest know how to win games. They have won 14 of their last 21 league games of the season. So they are well versed in making sure they get over the line. They lead here by a goal to nil. Coming forward over on the right is Sinani once again. Pieper gets it back infield towards O'Brien and then picked up by Sinani who is in a tangle with uh, Yates and a free kick is given just short of the centre circle. I think the players will be happy, sorry, in, you know, in terms of the sun going down. You know, the pitch completely shading now and can be a little bit energy sapping. Looking at Forest, they've started pretty well. You know, Johnson full of energy. You know, Davis is tracking back. You know, runners there working hard without the ball. So maybe at half-time, maybe Steve Cooper said, come on, just need a little bit more from you. Ball sent down the right for Nottingham Forest once again. It's picked up by Brennan Johnson, who brushes aside one challenge. Colwell just moves in front of him and manages to get it clear. Picked up by Spence, and then he's tackled by O'Brien. Comes through to Worrell. It's flashed forward by Worrell. Doesn't go to anyone in red, and Colwell just hits it long. And Sorba Thomas is chasing, but Bree Salmon knows it will bounce into the air, and he will be able to collect it. The last time that Nottingham Forest were in the top flight, Kevin Keegan was the England boss. Tony Blair was the... Prime Minister, the Sopranos had only just started on television. People were buying Westlife, Boyzone and Martin McCutcheon records. Yeah. But most surprisingly of all, Manchester United were very, very good. But they won the tr treble the last year that uh, Nottingham Forest were in the Premier League. Sam, um, there has been a change already. Sorba's Johnson, uh, he's gone on the right hand side, Sorba Thomas. So, uh, Still up front, but he's on the right-hand side, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see how he uh, tries to occupy the, the central defensive trio of uh, Scott McKenna, Steve Cook and Joe Worrell. Uh, Steve Cooper not happy about the challenge down in front of him, which generates a Huddersfield free kick. He thinks it should be a, a Nottingham Forest free kick get quite animated down in front of us Steve Cooper he knows how big this playoff final could be not only for Nottingham Forest but for him as well after doing such a terrific job dragging them from the abyss to the bottom of the table can I can I join in uh, who you bumped into on the way here oh, today yeah, that'd be good. I met Brian Laws and his family oh, did a you, forest yeah? legend yeah bought me, a, right back. bought me a diet coke yeah thanks mate <laughs> Well, he didn't get the shirt uh, revenue that uh, Steve Hodge did, so <laughs> he, he hasn't—he hasn't—he wasn't going to buy you a bottle of Bollinger. <laughs> but, I played with Hodge, mate. He's a—he's a shrewd cookie. Well done, Hodge. Yeah. All clean up field by Nottingham Forest. Again, no sort of detail in their ability to get forward and cause some problems there. It was just a hit and hope from the back to front. They don't need to do that. Sarah's brought the ball out for Huddersfield. It's Nottingham Forest who lead by a goal today. Taking the ball down the left touchline, it's played into Sinani. Sinani into Toffolo. Toffolo, who hasn't really got into the game in that first half. Maybe he'll be more of a feature as the match wears on. Don't you think, Sam, they've started the second half as they did the first? Pretty sharp, moving it, you know, good movement off the ball. Punching it in, you know, this is how they started the first half. They lost a little bit of that energy and the impetus, maybe they just got it back here in a minute, can they get something from this? Paul Brown is stretching every sinew of his uh, slender body to get his energy onto the pitch. Garner skips away from Pipo, moves to the left-hand side of the Forest half and then up to Keenan Johnson who sends it past Lees and charges down the left-hand side, delivers a cross into the box towards Johnson but across comes the defender and Cole this time manages to get it clear but it's cleared only as far as Jed Spence who moves up towards the right angle of the penalty area, infield to Yates, Yates in Harris to shoot, the referee says, uh, play on, despite the ball breaking to the left, Garner now on to Jed Spence once again, who tries to go up to the edge of the penalty here, goes on the outside of the defender, gets to the byline, produces a cross, takes a little flick, taken behind is it, it's a corner. Yeah, that's more small like it, I mean Davis looks really energised, if you're not going to make a change, what you want to do here, 
Yeah, certain centre forwards. Make them feel good. Come on, come on, Keenan. We need more from you. Go out there, really put yourselves about. You can see there, got it to feet, turned his man, a brilliant burst down the line. And that is much more like him. What pace he showed there, Dave. Yeah, he's quick. He's quick. And on his day, look, he just looked a bit lacklustre, that first quarter time. Corner on this near side. And uh, it's going to be James Garner to take this uh, corner kick. Another good delivery from him towards the far post. Steve Cook is coming in underneath it. And Colback is there as well. It comes to Zinconagel. His hit wasn't great. And it's smuggled away towards the halfway line. And Zinconagel gets it back to Jed Spencer. A bit of pressure here from Lewis O'Brien. And Spencer's got to be very, very careful. And he is just about to take it away from uh, O'Brien and out towards this near side and now Garner's picked it up again he cuts in field plays it to the right and it's a little bit short Levi Colwell manages to intercept and O'Brien's got it back again now Huddersfield come forward it's sent out to the right and Zorba Thomas Thomas with the right footed delivery towards the edge of the box and getting back there to get it clear was Steve Cook who positioned himself well on the edge of the Forest penalty area it's uh, played in behind Lewis O'Brien and then given to Jonathan Hogg, O'Brien drives forward again, tries to cut in past Yates. Was there a foul there by Zinkenagel? There was, it's going to be a free kick and a yellow card. Yeah, I mean, John Ross has just pointed about three times. Is it, he's pointing to Yates, right? Or is it Zinkenagel? I, mean, I think it was Zinkenagel, yeah. wasn't it? But you'd, well, I'm surprised because Yates is often handed off a few players, but it looks like it is Zinkenagel. I think he meant that, I've had enough of that, so I'm going to stop it with you. He didn't realise it was Yates doing that. Well, I mean, that's a foul on, that's a foul by Yates, and Yates has handed off a couple of people, maybe the first one was in Canada, but anyway, nonetheless, it's enough. Look, can they do more with these deliveries so far? Tom Thomas, that haven't really troubled Bryce Samba. Yep. So there's going to be a change down in front of us, and uh, it does look as if uh, the first change is going to be John Russell, who comes on for Huddersfield Town. Zorba Thomas set the free kick though, floats it in towards Navi Saru, drives towards the ball, tries to dive in in front of McKenna, but McKenna showing how just intelligent he is there. He didn't have to do too much, he just positioned his body into an area that allowed Saar not to get on the end of it. Absolutely fantastic defending. If you're not in the right position, use your body, hold him off and be strong enough. That was brilliant. Spence trying to get away from Toffolo, wins it back on the halfway line now. Hogg has got the ball just in front of the centre circle, plays it square. Pieper out towards the right-hand side. Zorba Thomas with a chance to cross. He delivers it towards the far post and Spence just sees it behind before it can reach Tsunami. And it's smuggled out for the first corner of the second half for Huddersfield Town. Really good spell here, isn't it, Ian? Certainly kicking into the Huddersfield Town fans. You know, they're in the ascendancy. They need something from this little spell of pressure, though. If they can get one now, we, honestly, this is really exciting, fantastic game we got. One in Forest lead by goal to nil, but the set-piece specialist Huddersfield Town are eyeing up an equalising goal from this situation. They're about to make a substitution, a lot of players bunched towards the near post, running towards that near post. Hogg gets up there with a the header and it's over the top of the bar and it's out in the way for a goal kick. So the change can take place now and it was uh, a really well worked free kick and here is that change and that change is Saar for Russell and I don't think any of us are too surprised about that David. No I mean I guess the surprise would be where he started you know, at the very beginning of the game Hogg will now drop into that middle of the of the back unit to get and play in because yeah, they're losing one nil. they need their best players on the ball now to go and play and that's why Russell's on the pitch and Hogg just dropping in as that sort of you know well he's a Middlesbrough Mascherano that's his nickname <laughs> Brilliant. He yeah. deserves that. He's really comfortable on the ball. He'll get them going from there. I, I, I think, as we said at the start with Dan, I think he selected Saar thinking Surridge was starting. And I think he gambled on that. And you can't say it's back five, but I think he should have just stuck with the, you know, the likes of Hogg playing centre-half and Russell in the side at the beginning. So if you're Cooper now, do you go... Well, yeah. There you go. Surridge. Yeah, absolutely. Now you get ready. But even Davis is a threat, but certainly Surridge, I'm sure, will be coming on soon. He will play some part in this game without a shadow. A ball play down the left-hand side by O'Brien. It's sent over the top for Forrest to chase, but Hogg is there doing his defensive work. Levi Colwell collided with Brennan Johnson. And, not, uh, hey, and obviously the middles were Mascherano's because Mascherano was a midfielder. And went back you to know, playing as a centre-half. Went back as playing as a ball playing centre-half. And that is exactly, look, there's Hogg there, firing the ball into midfield, just a poor control. 
Keenan Davis over on the left hand side there for Nottingham Forest. A little touch by Zinkan Arkel. Cole back couldn't take it in his stride as it was played towards him. And now it's picked up by Sinani who nudges it forward onto Russell. Russell plays it wide. Sorba Thomas is on the attack now in the right wing position. A low cross to the near post. Cut out by McKenna. And it's put out over on the far side. And it's away for a throw. And those back players so very helpful. They give them an aerial threat. But they're very good. Steve Cook, Joe Warren, Scott McKenna. Not many championship strikers get too much change out of them. And they've looked pretty sturdy so far in this game. McKenna again with a timely intervention as once again they come forward Huddersfield. O'Brien, the son Garner wins the ball and then Warren plays it against the Luxembourg International. Flicks into the air and it's gathered by Bree Samba. And it's uh, cleared away by Nottingham Forest. And, and Bree Samba just, the sun just came out again uh, over the top of the stand and it's in that area right in front of his goal and he just had to use his hand just to peer underneath it to see where everybody was because the sun was in his eyes can't be a day for a cap or a pork pie hat well yeah. he could borrow it if he wants <laughs> Ian's a man you got one for a vacation by sounds of it yeah <laughs> yeah I went to Brighton they don't care what they wear down there and I thought do you know what I'm going to change my cap for a pork pie hat and I got about three of them one nil to Nottingham Forest, you're listening to Talk Sport. We're live at Wembley Stadium under the arch and uh, Nottingham Forest have been given a free kick just short of the halfway line. Sam Surridge is out warming up down in front of us. Just going through his paces away to our left-hand side. Interesting to see when he is called upon by Steve Cooper. Ball played up to Zinkenar. And the Austrian guides it back to Ryan Yates, whose presence forced Colwell into the own goal and actually you know, Saar had been dragged out of position and that's why Colwell had to cover and that's why Yates put him under pressure as he can see that own goal Davis trying to put pressure on the back line comes back out to Garner who shoots from distance and again another good hit by him right towards the far corner this time patted down by Lee Nichols and cleared away by Huddersfield Town still 1-0 to Forest yeah it's ambitious though again isn't it They're up against the best keeper in the league really you know I think two of the best keepers and I know certainly Bournemouth and, and Fulham might have something to say about that but, but nonetheless to try and beat Nichols from that sort of distance is, is uh, I think ambitious just keep it moving work it out to the right hand side again to Spence Carlos Coran again doing his cosmetics uh, the videos that your mum used to do in the 80s, the calinetics. I don't know what that was. My mum used to have a video there. Bounce around in front of the, uh, doing aerobics. They bounce around in front of the TV with one of those on. And certainly Carlos Corberan is going through the full repertoire. Right, that is his usual, as Mark was saying. You know, whenever I've seen him, he is so animated on the sideline, kicks every ball. If you're a winger or you're a defender, you wouldn't want to be that side. You want to be on the other side of the pitch. Yeah. I know plenty of players, plenty of brilliant players, who couldn't wait to be away from the bench. You know, certainly when they had a manager like, like maybe Carlos is. Yeah, and he's got a bit of the Mikel Arteta's about him and the fact that he's so uh, up and down and full of gesticulation is Carlos Corberan. Uh, Huddersfield have got a little bit of disruption behind the scenes, haven't they, in terms of ownership, etc., etc., over the last little while, but he managed to uh, survive all that. Dean Hoyle back as the chief executive now, and uh, they're in a much better shape than they were. And they're all set up and ready to go for the Premier League, but if they're going to get to the Premier League, they need to turn this around. They're trailing 1-0 at Wembley. Had a lot of the ball in the second half. Yeah, they have, but again, Keenan Davis just lost it. Ball comes into, he's got to make it stick. Here on the right side, people with a delivery into the box, headed away by Steve Cook, the Nottingham Forest centre half. Picked up by McKenna after it was nodded back to him. Keenan Davis this time does hold it up a little bit better, sends it into James Garner. He bounces off one challenge and then the ball spills to Yates and now Morrill allows it to run through to Jed Spence who just about keeps it in on the near touchline. He's short of the halfway line, right side, finds Worrell who sends it down the touchline looking for Brennan Johnson but it's headed away by Colwell who is uh, unimpeded really and Huddersfield have got it back again. Consistency has been the key over the course of the season. They don't lose many games. They lost just 10 matches this season. Only Bournemouth lost fewer. They are a resolute bunch. They find a way to get through matches, Huddersfield. Can they find a way back into this one? Sam, I'm very impressed with them. I think their mentality is very, very strong. They 
some teams fold when they go behind they haven't done that at all Russell plays it out towards the far touchline comes back in again towards him and then all the way back to the centre circle where Hogg is waiting for it the captain chest pumped out plays it up into the body of Lewis O'Brien O'Brien fair haired full of energy and has been all season plays it back towards the halfway line then back to the left again now it's picked up by Colwell Colwell strides forward plays it in towards Sinani little back hill towards the middle of the park and then Russell sends it wide towards the right and Sorba Thomas now picking it up running on the outside of Colback low crosses the ball to the near post and he was almost finding Sinani there but it was cleared away by McKenna once again yeah, what a game he's having Dave it's another low cross though isn't it I think they probably look at certainly if you're Thomas you look at that back line for Forrest it's pretty big isn't it you know so you go low across the ground they've cut up a couple of crosses really well Toffolo chipping the ball towards the far post Colback gets over his head and goes all the way through to Thomas so it's still alive for Huddersfield on the attack here floated into the area away by Worrell heads it clear comes out to uh, Pieper and then into Russell Russell Plays it wide, Peeper once again, he's got space on the far side for Zorba Thomas, he might decide to cross it himself, instead he goes back to Russell in the dead centre of the Forest half, Brennan Johnson closes him down, the Forest can't get the ball off Huddersfield at the moment, 1-0 to Forest, live on TalkSport at Wembley, the best place for football, we'll have all the fallouts of the Champions League, the latest on those stories, and of course all the reaction to this game on breakfast tomorrow morning from 6am, make sure you join the guys for that. And then uh, Jim White and uh, Simon Jordan back together again at 10 o'clock on Monday morning. I think Martin Keown's going to be with them this Monday morning. Had a bit of fallout on Friday. I don't know if you saw that. And, uh, it's available on Twitter. Have a look at it. It was quite, it was quite intense, actually. Not something I'd like to get in the middle of. But they're all back tomorrow morning. Uh, it'll be interesting to hear what Simon made of uh, the weekend's activities and UEFA's reaction to what happened at the Champions League final. We'll get that tomorrow, live on TalkSport at 10 o'clock. Well, we're going to get the change that we've been expecting. Surridge about to come on for Nottingham Forest. Change the dynamic a little bit. And uh, Huddersfield at the moment dominating possession, but losing on the scoreboard. 65 gone. Here is Sinani, out wide to Sorba Thomas. He's halfway inside the Nottingham Forest half of the field. He guides it back to the centre circle. Hogg now takes a couple of strides forwards, plays it out towards the right. And then it's whipped by Sorba Thomas, but only against Zinconard when it's out of play over on the far side. And here's the change, David Conley. Yeah, and it is um, a light-for-light -light change. You know, Keenan Davis, he put himself about as a bit better in that second, start of that second half, but no surprise really, Surridge coming on. Whenever I've seen him, he's been so impressive. He can do a little bit of everything. He's brilliant in both boxes. Now they've got the lead, defending corners. We saw that headed one off the line against Sheffield United. He's a real threat in the opposition box as well and he runs around. You can hear the roar he's got there from the fans. And a raft of Huddersfield changes for Talk Sports. Mark Wilson on the touchline. Yeah, it's uh, Dwayne Holmes and Jordan Rhodes, really the two main attacking threats that Carlos Corbran has got to call upon. And he's bringing them both on here with, what, 24 minutes remaining. Uh, he makes two changes. Sinani is one that's come off. He's not really got involved, as is Sinani, this afternoon. And the other one, Danny Ward. So uh, two attacking players off. And Rhodes and Holmes comes out, uh, come on. He's all in now, Carlos Corbran need a goal and uh, Jordan Rose scored that dramatic goal in the uh, semi-final which steered them towards Wembley's arch and now underneath it he's charged with making an impact he's back at Huddersfield once again Jordan Rose scored three goals in the last five matches after just one in his first 22 this season he hasn't hit double figures for quite some while now he's not the same player was ripping up the championship maybe five or six years ago but he's still got a goal threat 32 years of age now Jordan Rhodes and he will lead the line for Huddersfield going into the final half an hour or more of this game ball sent long by uh, Steve Cook upfield and it bounces inside the Huddersfield half and Colback takes it on he brings it down and then guides it all the way back with the outside of his left foot to his goalkeeper Bryce Sandler how do you think those changes will impact the game? Um, I think it's what he had to do. Um, for me, he's got everything right, apart from his starting selection, you know, because he didn't stick with what he thought his team was his best. Putting Hogg back there, they looked, they looked so much more comfortable. I'm not yeah, they do. Uh, you know, but for me, it's really 
a conundrum. If you haven't been here before, do you? You should just bring your A game, whatever you think. Yeah, I, I, and, and I think Steve Cooper's learned from last season, certainly. And look, Carlos Corbrani, they might get back in the game now. You know, they've certainly been much improved. Holmes trying to uh, dive all the way through. It was a bit of a late tackle actually on the wall, which he wasn't happy about, and then played in towards the edge of the penalty area. Toffolo wants to get round the left hand side. He's just about kept it in, but Spence is not going to allow him to walk away with the ball. And it's cleared upfield towards Brennan Johnson. A little flick into Zinkanago, wasn't alert to it, but it wasn't a great touch anyway. And Hollis could have got it back again. And I think some of the Hollingham Forest fans just getting a little bit frustrated. I know that Johnny Owen, who was presenting our programmes earlier on today, talking about uh, these two teams in detail, but he's very much uh, Nottingham Forest-led. He w w still works at the club, and he was talking about, you know, the nervousness that will come with this game today. I know that he and Vicky are up in the stand here, watching on, probably biting a few fingernails, I think. Because it's 1-0 to Nottingham Forest, but it's not safe yet, that's for sure. The game's still very much all to play for here at Wembley with 22 minutes to go. It doesn't matter who's come on, I mean, sorry, he just lost possession. It's just so difficult for them to get a foothold in the game at the mirror. Not, I mean, Spence, I was just going to say, just let that go out of play, and he has done. They just need to settle down, try and have a spell in possession, retain the ball, and just get some composure back here for us. We're under an awful lot of pressure. But it's been very impressive by Huddersfield. You know, you can see that they're a really good team. They're not used to losing, they're not panicking. The occasion's not getting to them, so we really do have a fantastic occasion on our hands here. Carlos Corberan is stripped off his uh, lightweight jumper to reveal a slightly oversized cream-coloured jersey and is watching as his team try and defend another attack and Zinconago and Surridge have combined well Surridge on the left edge of the area has kept hold of the ball this time moved it out to the left and Colback has taken over a left wing cross in towards the middle of the penalty area which is only half clear it might drop for Johnson it doesn't it's headed away by Colwell and then further cleared by Dwayne Holmes and up to the halfway line now picked up by Warrow who keeps Forrest on the front foot here into Yates the ball goes and then Zinconago had to stretch for it but Johnson picks it up and then shoots towards the far post he was hoping maybe that someone would come in underneath that it didn't quite it was a really good idea from Nottingham Forest a quick slick attack which almost caused the problem I tell you that wasn't too dissimilar to Valverde's effort last night a cross come shot a cross goal tapped in at the back post by Vinicius but this time there's no one really reading this for Forest and actually again Jets Bench could have had it how many times today could Jets Bench have had the ball so often they would normally roll it to him wouldn't they yeah you know? I don't know. I don't know why they're taking so many shots on from distance for us. Another change about to uh, take place and uh, Max Lowe is about to come on. And in April, Steve Cooper was saying that he, he's finished. He's not going to play for the rest of the season. And now he's on the bench at Wembley and he's going to come off the bench at Wembley to go and play the final half an hour of this game, 20 minutes of this game. Maybe uh, it might be longer. Of course, we will have extra time if Huddersfield get an equaliser in the game. The game at the moment in the balance, but it's Nottingham Forest who have the advantage. They lead by a goal to nil. Spence gets it off uh, Yates and plays it square. Yates into Garner. Garner now just over the halfway line. A couple of steps inside Huddersfield territory. He plays it into Zinconagel. They're back in towards that left-hand side. Colback maybe be the man who is uh, withdrawn here. Looks a little bit green bracket actually, doesn't he, Jack Colback over on the far side? I think that's just how he always looks like that, Jack. <laughs> He's got that natural gay green cracker. <laughs> it's clicked on the right by uh, Steve Cook and then interception from McKenna once again. Takes it out. Look at Corberan going mad because the ball didn't go where he wanted it to go. Comes back to Spence. Spence back in field once again. Here is... Uh, Yates under no pressure so plays it back to Bree Samba Jordan Rose tries to cause pressure for the goalkeeper doesn't manage it so it's clear by McKenna down the left side it's headed away into midfield Zinconago can't get there Russell did Zinconago will get there this time then he plays it to Garner who quickly tries to return it to Surridge who's on the edge of the box but Hogg was there to tidy up and then the ball is broken loose and Dwayne Holmes is speeding forward at pace into the penalty area down the left side a low ball into the box might come through the top below who skips down over the defender and dives on the floor and the referee's going to cook him for simulation in the playoff final he wanted a penalty the Huddersfield fans did too but a yellow card from John Moss a simulation to Harry Toffolo 
Yeah, because, I mean, they just about got away with this for us. And, I mean, if you're a Forest fan, your heart's in your mouth because you go back to the semi-final against Luton, Naismith for Luton slipped and Huddersfield win and scored. This is almost a carbon copy. Cuts the ball back and he does dangle the leg cold back, but he doesn't touch him. He doesn't touch him. Not the tiniest bit of contact there. I don't think so. He does. He catches him, mate. Oh. That's a pen. Oh, well. He's got that totally wrong. Uh, VAR well, VAR will, will have a look at it. it. And uh, Paul That's Tierney a pen. will be reviewing it. And he, they certainly are looking at it. That's VAR. A pen. And was there any contact is the question. Now, at the beginning of the season, Absolutely. they wanted... Penalty. They were suggesting that they, they didn't want penalties like that, where the contact, if there was any, was really light. Now, is from those pictures that you're seeing, we're seeing the VAR our, our output here, is there discernible contact for Toffolo to go to ground? Yeah. Not according to Pete, Paul Tierney, there is. No penalty is the answer. And the yellow card stands. Oh, sorry, I'm not having that. That's not right. David? I mean, from different angles, it, it, you know, to me it looked like... It's just because he says he thinks it's a penalty. No, no, from different <laughs> angles, from the angle I'm at, it didn't look like contact. From the opposite angle, it looked like there might have been a tiny bit, but it, it was hard to see. But contact uh, doesn't always mean penalty, does no, it? But no, but if you can't put your foot down and carry on running, because he would have got to the ball, for me that's a penalty. Well, that's, the, that's the harshest yellow card I've ever seen in my life. Do you think if the dive was... In keeping with the foul, L a little bit theatrical. I don't know if that went against him, Toffolo. I'm not sure. Well, nonetheless, me, look, if there was contact, VAR should be given a penalty. That's what he's here that's for. That's my old point. I've... Well, listen, we thought the VAR would have a moment at some point over this playoff weekend where it came into sharp focus. Carlos Corberan will be going absolutely mad, and Steve Cooper will be breathing a huge sigh of relief. It will divide opinion, I'm sure. It's divided opinion in the commentary box. And uh, I'm sure you'll be able to have your say when the boot room opens for business a little bit later on. 03717 is the number to call. Can you imagine me if that's my team on the side? <laughs> Bad enough, and it's not your team. <laughs> and the ball's with Yates down the left side of the centre circle. Gets dropped. And uh, Jordan Rose gives away a free kick. And it's going to be a uh, ball in from... Uh, in for uh, a free kick just left at the centre circle. So Max Lowe has come on. And uh, what was the change? Who came off? I think it looks like Zinkenago, I think. Just off the top of my head. Yeah. Yeah, looking for it, yeah. It is Zinkenago who's been replaced. So in that period when they were doing the VAR review, Zinkenago was replaced by Max Lowe. And it means that Colback actually has uh, gone into a, a more central position. He's standing over this free kick. And... Uh, Nottingham Forest still lead by a goal to nil on TalkSport with 15 minutes remaining now at the playoff final. Steve Cooper just trying to orchestrate a set piece here. Yates has gone into the box, Worrell's up from the back, it's flipped in towards the far post, headed on by Steve Cook back across the face of goals. Orbit Thomas away, on to Brennan Johnson who prods it forward with his head. It bounces around on the edge of the box and then uh, McKenna tries to keep it alive by bursting into space. He does brilliantly actually and then gets tackled and it's away for a throw into Forest deep inside Huddersfield territory. It's excellent work by him again today. What a game he's having. My man of the match at the moment. Absolutely fantastic. There's a few players, I mean, Royal went down with a touch of cramp, which, you know, there's still a fair bit of time left, so concerning if, if it was cramp or maybe he's feeling something, a few players. Ball sent long towards Surridge and Surridge goes up with Nichols and he slipped as he went up there and then charged straight into Nichols and then Surridge went down and he looks as if he's hurt himself away to our right-hand side. John Moss has stopped the game. Uh, I mean, Nichols didn't do anything wrong there. I mean, it was Surridge who went into him, but he seems to have hurt himself. Either that or he's uh, wasting a bit of time. I think he, he got the full weight on him. The keeper lands completely on him. I just wonder if he damaged his shoulder, actually, when he landed. Because he went down. I mean, he's at, to be honest, Surridge is only looking at Nichols there. But he doesn't have any eye on the ball, so... He's a lucky boy if he gets away while well, he's got away with this in terms of not getting a card. But I think when, once you leave your eyes off the ball and you start looking at the keeper and you foul him, normally you're getting a bit of trouble. You're listening to Huddersfield now, Nottingham Forest 1 in the EFL Championship Playoff Final. Live on TalkSport with McDonald's Fun Football. So it's McDonald's Fun Football 2. Find out more 
And uh, remember, straight after we finish here, you'll be able to have your say on all of the days and the weekends football by calling the boot room 03717 uh, Mark Wilson's on the touchline. What have you seen? Yeah, Carlos Corbran getting increasingly frustrated, isn't he, down at pitch side uh, with his players. He feels that they're giving the ball away too much. That run for home's really the only chance the Huddersfield have created. Steve Cooper looks reasonably relaxed given the circumstances. There's not been too many scares for him. Uh, the Huddersfield Town official Twitter account has uh, tweeted, VAR decides that it isn't a penalty despite clear contact on Toffolo's ankle. Well, at least they're sure. I, I agree with them. I wonder what Carlos Corberan will say. Mark Wilson will be talking to the managers after the game and we'll try and find out. In the aftermath of the playoff final here at Wembley where we'll get the best reaction to what is the build as the richest game in the world. I know that Rick Parry said to Dan Windle that that was a, a lazy description. It wasn't wrong, was it? <laughs> you do get, I think Deloitte made it 170 million quid for getting into the Premier League. Given away cheaply by Huddersfield, and now Savage has picked it up, and he's charged towards the right edge of the area. Played in Johnson, back to Yates. Yates plays it behind the right side, looking for a Jed Spence, but they were in, on completely different wavelengths, and the ball dribbles out for a goal kick away to our right. I mean, the fact that Nottingham Forest, after scoring the goal, haven't really tested Lee Nichols' goal in this second half, David, would that be a, of concern to Steve Cooper? Um, look, they have retreated a bit, you know, with the goal that, that they've got, but well, they're in behind now. And Topolo is charging forward and his left footed cross was too early really for the two players that were coming through the middle of the pitch Jorba Thomas and Lewis O'Brien and it went between the two and cleared out by Nottingham Forest towards this near side I will say the Huddersfield fans really do have a lot of belief in their team you know they don't think it's over yet 80,019 are here in the stadium today to watch these two huge clubs fight for a place back in the Premier League and a lot has made about the uh, uh, the history of Nottingham Forest but go back 90 years or so and they were regular visitors Huddersfield to Wembley here down the left Toffolo delivering across into the box headed away uh, from the edge of the six yard box by Max Lowe it comes back by a hog towards the right Peeper under pressure from James Garner and he'll go all the way back to his goalkeeper Sorba Thomas who has been a real threat now playing closer and closer to Jordan Rhodes as this game goes on. And that'll just mean they play a bit more centrally, more direct, which, you know, those two holders for Forrest, I think that'll be OK, won't really trouble them. Here down the left is Dwayne Holmes, up towards uh, O'Brien, can't reach Sorba Thomas, and back to Russell. Russell into Holmes once again. Bit of space on the far side, no, not quite, so they have to go to the halfway line. They've got no option out there, they've no, no outlet. Well, that's because Sorba Thomas has yeah. drifted infield. Yeah, very narrow into the centre it goes again and then out to the left and then coming forward is O'Brien towards Toffolo plays it again Spence goes behind and now here is the chance because it's another corner for Huddersfield Town well look make no mistake Huddersfield have got them on the ropes they just need a clear-cut chance I mean the possible penalty we know but something in open play or or from a set piece this might be the opportunity what have they got anything different they've tried a couple of clever things Forrest hanging on here trying to drag themselves through to claw their way through for the 90-minute mark. We've only got 10 minutes to go. Huddersfield trying to find a way through, but they haven't had too many clear efforts on Bree Sanders' goal. Right-footed delivery by Saul Thomas in towards the near post, and it was aimed towards Jordan Rose, who threw himself at it and hit it straight behind and away for a goal kick. But another inventive delivery once again. They knew exactly what they were trying to do, even if they couldn't manage to execute yeah, it. I, I don't believe maybe I'm wrong I believe there's another goal in this game before the end I, I, do. I, I don't think that's the best ball in I mean Jordan Rose needs something he can get on the end of that was you know, too close to the end line just get it a little bit away because he's got a lot, a lot a long way to travel there Jordan Rhodes and you know, I don't think they made the most of their set pieces today something that I know they've had a, drawn a lot of praise from this season scored a lot of goals but today it hasn't quite worked for them Remember Wednesday, Poland against Wales is on TalkSport 2 at 5 o'clock. On the same night, Italy-Argentina at 8 o'clock start on TalkSport. And then uh, Hungary against England is...
is uh, on Saturday, next week live on TalkSport. Bryce Sandler looks a little bit as if he's moving gingerly, but Toffolo has delivered across into the box. And actually, it wasn't a bad delivery, there was just no one there to capitalise. But they won it back over on the far side, Peeper getting the better of Max Lowe, cuts in Bill, gives it to Russell, Russell down the right, O'Brien goes down, under another challenge, they look at John Moss, John Moss turns his back on the situation. No, fair challenge there, Sam, Max Lowe, great footing, all into the box once again, high towards the far post, Rhodes tries to get above Worrell, and the free kick doesn't come his way either, and the ball drifts behind the way for a goal kick. And John Moss is getting berated by Lewis O'Brien, who feels as if he was crunched inside the penalty area. Well, he was, but to be honest, fairly. I mean, just comes on the inside there, Max Lowe. I, I think he gets a touch on the ball. It looks a little bit clumsy on second viewing, to be honest. Oh, I don't know. It looks clumsy, it looks like second viewing is like a pin. Well, that uh, looks like another penalty to me. VAR didn't even look at it. Well, it just shows you on the replay, all eyes now on John Moss maybe they are no they are well, no they are oh, no, gone Sam down yeah. away to our left hand side and that is why how can they not the be looking at that Sam, seriously if they're doing their job correctly how can they not be looking at that oh, was it a tangle of legs, because it looks as if Max Lowe has threaded his leg his right leg, in between the two legs of Lewis O'Brien. That's a much clearer penalty than to be honest, the other one, which I found difficult to discern if there was a touch or not. That one, I mean, it's clear. I mean, Samba looks like he's pulled his groin, so that might be a bit of an issue for them. So VAR didn't look at it. We didn't get the VAR proper review. They, they would have checked it because they check everything, but they would have decided that it wasn't worthy of a full review. I'm That's glad, quite I'm glad I'm not doing it, I've got to say, because I'd have given two penalties. Shows what I know. He was cut. He was clumsy. I mean, first view, and I thought he got the ball, but on the on the replays that we've seen from a couple of angles, it's pretty clear. Do you think that was a clear cut penalty? Yeah, yeah. On second viewing, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they got an issue. I mean, the time we got sent off in the game. I don't remember. Warren went in goal. They got Hall from the bench, so he, he could. I don't know if you remember. He, in the FA Cup against Liverpool, he was outstanding. Yeah, that's so if he, if he has to come on there. Uh, We've got good cover there, but nonetheless, I mean, penalties we've already seen, if it does get to that stage, you lose Samba now. Well, Bryce Samba is back on his feet. Uh, the word is he's going to continue for the final five minutes here. And uh, Steve Cooper will nervously bite more fingernails. And they're having a conversation and Steve Cooper is saying, look, if there is a problem, let's make a change. He's asking the medical staff to give him a clear indication. He's looking at Cooper and he's thinking, Cooper's looking at Bryce Sandler and he's thinking, you're not fit, fella. And if you're not fit, I don't want you out there. Quite rightly, get him off if he's... You can't have a goalie who might have to make a save injured. And he's hobbling back towards his six-yard ball. Call me a cynic. Could this all be a bit of a play act? We saw that he was up for the theatricals in the semi-final shootout, causing problems for others as a result of that pulled off three spectacular saves. Now, is he just doing this? Because the way he moved forward there, there was, there was no problem. It was only when they were watching him that they were looking at him and thinking, oh, is he OK that he was hobbling backwards towards his own goal? Anyway, Holmes comes forward for Huddersfield in the last few minutes. Jed Spence comes across and produces a track tackle and celebrates the tackle like he scored a goal because he knows that every time they make an intervention now they're holding Huddersfield at bay well let's see if they get this long throw right because the previous one they all dropped off in the box and then Huddersfield took it short and put a, a really dangerous ball in let's hope they get the marking right here for a Forest fan ball tossed in by uh, Holmes in towards the centre of the six yard box it's cleared first time and then goes back in off the defender Johnson oh Jude Spence with a poor clearance and Johnson has to help him out by hooking it clear towards the near touchline and it goes out and it's away for a throw nervous moments in the Royal Box and Evangelos Marinakis the owner of uh, Nottingham Forest looks a little bit nervy as the ball is cleared by Jed Spence from another cross from the left from Holmes back to Topolo Topolo to Hogg Hogg 
sends it square and it's collected by people who's going to shoot from 30, 40 yards out. And it was a wild effort that went miles over the top of the crossbar. And uh, Marinakis can just wipe a little bit more sweat off that brow. Wembley madness that is on Everson. Sorry, what are you thinking? Give it back to Hogg, go back to the left, get a ball in the box. That is madness. Well, it looks like Cook is going to take the goal kick here. I mean, Steve Cooper, look, he's saying, go down, Bryce. We're getting you off. We've got a top keeper in Neil Horvath on the bench. Go down, you're coming off. I would take him off right now. Ethan, That's what Cooper's saying, but the boy Samba's still on his feet. Ethan Horvath is about to come off uh, to on the bench and go onto the field of play. He's taken his gear off, and now he's putting his bib back on again. But he's got a bit of uh, the carling of the, Cap the Carabao Cup final. Maurizio Sarri, Kepa or Ethan Balaga's about it, hasn't it? Steve just got to take control, tell the, the fourth official I'm making a substitution. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. the lad ain't going to want to come off. I, and, I, rem and I, I remember Maurizio Sarri trying to do that as well. Yeah. <laughs> didn't uh, yeah, end well, did. did it? No, uh, I didn't. Uh, Russell forward over towards the far side. The ball nodded down towards Holmes, who switched out towards the right-hand side now. Maranakis, the owner of Nottingham Forest, has been searching for the right formula to get them up over the line and into the Premier League for some while. This is their first playoff campaign. Uh, so he'll be absolutely delighted if they can see themselves into the Premier League in the next two minutes and ten seconds plus additional time at Wembley. Forrest's last win here was in the Four Members Cup in March 1992. Scott Gemmell and Kingsley Black scored the goals. Today, an own goal might just be enough for them, but they're hanging on here and Huddersfield are throwing everything at them. They're moving towards the edge of the box again. It's Lees, the centre-half, coming up to join the attack. O'Brien takes over left side of the awesome. penalty area, centre crosses the box and Samba comes out, collects the ball, drops on it, and now he'll go down, now he'll waste time, now he'll have his extra bit of uh, attention and maybe the substitution will take place and here it is. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, Again, if I, if I was being harsh on Huddersfield, I'd say their deliveries in the box have been really disappointing. It's another one just dinked up. And, you know, if you, if you are going to be forced from side to side because you can't go through the middle, you've got to make sure you deliver from wide. And their balls in the box, their crosses have been, been pretty disappointing today. And he started to dribble with it instead of just get out of your feet and yeah. bend it in. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> the referee's getting pelters because Bryce Samba is being taken off the pitch and not at the nearest juncture because he could go behind the goal because he was four yards away from it. But he's come over towards his near side because you know that he's using every single available second to run down the clock. The Huddersfield fans furious about that. The Nottingham Forest fans cheer his name as he ambles towards this near side. On comes Ethan Horvath for the last few minutes. And he's been a very good goalkeeper over the course of the time he's been at the I've said it, Ethan, brilliant. I mean, when Samba got sent out, I think it was against Stoke. He didn't get he, back in. He didn't get back in. It took him about four or five games. And fair play to Steve Cooper. You know, he kept him in, even though we had Samba on the sideline. And really good man management. Yeah, uh, Horvath just taking his place in the goal away to our left. There's a Nottingham Forest fan with her head in her hands. They've been waiting a long time, 23 years, to get back to the Premier League. This could be... This could be the moment that they have been waiting for. The drop ball has been given, he's picked the ball up, Horvath, and his first action will be the kick clear. But they've accumulated 76 points from the 38 games under Steve Cooper. They've won more than anyone else in that time frame. They had the best defensive record, and now they're on the verge of achieving something even more magical and distinctly more tangible. Six minutes of added time at the end of the 90 in the Wembley Championship playoff final. They've got to get through that six minute period if they want to go to the Premier League for the first time since 1999. The ball down the left hand side, played towards the edge of the area. It's hacked clear to the halfway line. It's headed back again towards Dwayne Holmes and then Huddersfield come on the attack with Toffolo. Remember those last few years of Nottingham Forest, Harry Bassett, Stuart Pearce in charge at one stage, Ron Atkinson all trying to get them afloat again after the Brian Clough years. Frank Clark did it for a bit but not long enough and then they dropped and they dropped and it's been a long time since they've even thought about coming back but now they can dream of it, now they can believe in miracles once again. A team that when Steve Cooper walked in the door were bottom of the table and had no chance now have every chance of being promoted to the Premier League and it will mean so much this is a guy who walked in and embraced the history of the football club the history given to them by Brian Clough 
twice European Cup winners, winners of the first division, League Cup winners on several occasions, and now heading back to the big time. If they can hold on here, all headed on by Surridge into the path of Johnson. He looks absolutely on his feet now as it's cleared away up over the halfway line. Who played 90 seconds of added time. We've still got four and a half minutes to play. So there's a long way to go yet at the end of the playoff final. And Johnson is just hounding Colwell once again. And his touch in front of Yates. At the moment, the telling touch. The own goal that came just at the end of the first half. Here is... Tom Leeds for Huddersfield, looking to get the ball up the pitch. At the moment, Nottingham Forest Saints defending diligently, and Spence has done a brilliant job, and then it's given away cheaply by Yates, and then forward by Holmes, away by Cook, back to the halfway line. Yates doesn't get there, Hogg intervenes, he's smashed up forward by Warrell, the captain, and sent all the way through to the goalkeeper, Lee Nichols, who is probably thinking, I haven't seen the ball for about half an hour. Yes, yeah, just all hands on deck here for Forrest, you know, well, can you be a warrior out there? Steve Cook alongside him, those around McKenna, they've just got to sit in, keep Jed Spence and Max Lowe close beside you, really get through this. They come again, Huddersfield, looking for the goal that would take them to extra time, looking for the goal that will unsettle Nottingham Forest. They've hardly had a shot on target in the game, and that is a, a, a real problem, I think, that Carlos Corbyn will be slightly curious about but they've had two penalty games that have uh, claimed to have gone against them the ball is on the left with Sorba Thomas clicking to the edge of the area O'Brien with a shot through the six yard box it eludes everybody nobody's there to poke it home and it drifts behind and away for a goal kick was that the last chance here in Holloway it looked like you just got to take a gamble they weren't on the move they weren't anticipating that strike it's a clever ball in by Holmes You've got to throw everything at that. Dave, I think you'd have been on the end of there. Well, I mean, look, you could say maybe Toffolo when he cut in, you're thinking he might unleash one. He was unlucky. Russell trying to make a little late run in the box. But look, when you're playing, you're looking around, you see the stewards out, you see the rope starting to come out. You know, the, the sort of, Wendy's getting ready. There ain't long left now. They can find something, Huddersfield, really late on. And look, look, for all the possession that they've had in the game, and actually, Nottingham Forest have still had more than they have. They've hardly tested at all the goal away to our left. They haven't had a shot on target in the entire game, David. Yeah, that would surprise me. And their deliveries in the box have been disappointing. You know, I have a lot of the ball, but I haven't been creative enough. Not enough guile. And what I will say, that the most important thing I think the Huddersfield fans will never do is send John Moss a Christmas card after this. Well, they certainly won't be going to the final whistle and buying a, a record or two, will they? No. <laughs> Listen, there was a VAR as well, by the way, who uh, was quite able to check it, Paul Tierney, an experienced referee in the Premier League, who looked at both of those incidents and decided that they weren't penalties. So, you know, there will be Huddersfield fans that are furious about that, and I completely understand it, and we obviously have seen it here, and I think the consensus in this box is that at least one of them should have been a penalty. But it hasn't worked out like that. And Huddersfield haven't really created enough over the course of the 90 minutes. Forrest in the first half did create more chances. They took one of those chances. And as a result of that, they're going to the Premier League. The ball's on the right with Jed Spence. We played five minutes of the added time that has been allotted. He plays it against Toffolo and it goes out of play on this near side. And Nottingham Forest are starting to limp towards the finishing line now. 70 players recruited. Lamucci, Hewton, Karanka, Martin O'Neill under Maranakis have all been asked to achieve this with Nottingham Forest but it's Steve Cooper who came in after the season had started and had already given everyone else a head start who's minutes away from becoming a Nottingham Forest legend the fans in front of us are holding each other so close and so tight the fans have got the camera phones out they're recording the final few seconds here they know this is a pivotal moment in Nottingham Forest history the ball is out of play oh, Warburg no. is halfway down the touchline there's a long throw coming in here Steve Cook could have kept that in play you know and played it down the line Wise put it out for a throw when he had the time to clear his lines I don't know so this is it with 20 seconds left of the championship playoff final Dwayne Holmes to toss the long throw into the box to aim at someone anyone in blue and white it's headed away by Spence it's tossed back in by Holmes it's poorly sent back in by Holmes it goes behind and surely now that's the end all the fans around us are on their feet they can't quite believe that it's about to happen it is about to happen they spent 46 of the first 52 days in the championship relegation places but now 
in the last few seconds of the season they are going to be promoted to the Premier League for the first time in 23 years they're going to be playing top flight football Ethan Horvath places the ball down inside the six yard box we played six minutes and 30 seconds and there's the full time whistle and it's time for Nottingham Forest to party like it's 1999 despite their worst start to the season in 108 years Nottingham Forest the club of Brian Clough of Stuart Pearce of Gary Bertels of Archie Gemmell of Des Walker are making a return to the Premier League for the first time in a generation for so long they've been in the shadows a team from yesteryear but this is a game changer the last time they were in the top flight it was the 90s but now under the expert guidance of Steve Cooper they have been pushed just about to the Premier League Huddersfield brilliant over the course of the season assembling a group of loans and free transfers and going about their business quietly but Nottingham Forest are making the noise today returning to where they believe they belong finally they can see the wood through the tricky trees the Premier League awaits for Forest welcome back to the big time Huddersfield nil, Nottingham Forest 1